We're situated on the eastern side of the Prairie Coteau, and in this part of the state contains some of the largest intact tall grass prairie remaining. This morning, you know, we were out on site. We were joined by Wayne Krause, and we were viewing the sharp tail lek on the Krause operation. Sharp tail grouse are a grassland obligate species. They're endemic to this area. Their requirements for their life cycle um, is really these large intact grasslands. That's what we have here on this operation is, is some very expansive grasslands that support species like the sharp tail grouse. To what krauses are doing on their operation really supports their populations because with the, the rotational grazing system that they have implemented over the years and their continued management techniques to improve the health of the grassland really il illustrates the benefits of, of what we're seeing out there for sharp tails. Probably in the last 10 years, uh, we never knew what a grouse was around in Dual County, but uh, it's really expanding. We've got other pastures too that we've just started seeing them the last oh, couple years on them, but these here have probably been here about 10 years now. I think we've seen four of them at that first, what we first seen, and they've just been increasing steadily every year. Sharp-tailed grouse, they require different vegetation characteristics throughout their life cycle, starting, you know, if we start in the spring, they're gonna congregate on these, on these leks, which are typically located on top of hills uh, on ridge lines where vegetation is probably a little bit shorter and which makes uh, which makes their displays uh, more visual they tend to select for vegetation to nest in that that is uh, uh, a little bit taller um, and especially you know sharp tails sharp tail grouse um, because they begin to select for nesting sites and begin to nest so early in the spring, that residual vegetation from last the last year is really it's really important to them um, because we don't have any green cover growing yet, so they really key in on that vegetation from last year. And so, with a rotational grazing system that allows that vegetation from last year, especially when you're rotating through paddocks and allowing for adequate rest you really have that residual vegetation for birds like the sharp-tailed grouse available for, for nesting the following year. And then as you begin to work through these paddocks, you're promoting certain species to grow and certain diversity of plants. It's those areas that are highly diverse, you know, a highly diverse plant community that female grouse are gonna take their chicks to This particular section has never had anything broke up on it. Um, it's pretty rough ground, but there's been some others that are surrounding ground that we have around it. We have sowed that down. It was marginal ground. We've put it into grass, and we think we get more use out of it as grass than we do a, as farm ground, especially when it's marginal. And it's just hard to find good grass. And then we get some cool season grasses along with it, so we can get, we rotate onto them first in the spring. And then as uh, here coming like July, the warm season grasses take off, we go onto them then. Once in a while, we will go back on in the late fall on some of the cool season if it came back. But um, normally we don't let it get down. We try to leave probably a third of the grass out there. Well, I started working with Wayne Krause a few years ago on some water development on another unit and it kind of snowballed into working with the project that we have here today. Um, Wayne came to us along with Games Fish and Parks and asked about better water management for approximately three sections of land. It's a big operation especially for this part of the state. So we worked together and came up with a water design for him that includes multiple pipelines and tanks. It actually is about three to four miles of pipe that was put into the ground to make this all work. 
Um, funding for that project was provided through the Environmental Quality Incentive Program, or EQIP. So the benefit of putting in this water system is that krauses end up with better water quality for their livestock. It allows them to rotate their cattle more because they're, they can move based on the grass. They're not dependent on the water to say where they have to have their cattle. In a lot of cases, if you're working with surface water, that's the determining factor is where do you have quantity of water and quality of water. It's not that you can manage the grass properly. And if you can manage the grass properly, it allows for better habitat for all of the wildlife species. In addition, it keeps the cattle out of the wetlands and the streams, and that allows for better vegetation, which improves the habitat for especially our waterfowl in those situations. Anytime we can improve the quality of the grass, it improves habitat for a wide variety of species, including the sharp-tailed grouse. I don't know, it, it's just fun to come out here early in the morning when the sun's coming up and see all the different kinds of wildlife moving around and birds singing. And it, it's just different.